Don't Pay Attention Written by Area 51 Express I mean, pay attention to this. Just hear me out. I had returned home from work, and I was going through my regular evening routine. I pet my cat, turned on the TV, and started preparing dinner. I was waiting on some water to boil while staring out the kitchen window. While I was imagining winning arguments at work, the setting sun caught the steam from the pot at such an angle that it glowed with a golden incandescent. I wasn't looking at anything, really. Maybe that's why I noticed it. My eyes focused on something that swirled independently of the predictable path of the steam. The streams of water vapor faded away, but there remained what I can only describe as a silver hair suspended in the air. It wavered only slightly, unaffected by the vigorous steam. I swiped at it with my hand, but it remained floating in space. Confused, reached out to feel it. I lingered in the area too long, and the steam reminded me the water was ready. Stupid. Later on, I was about to call it a night, when I noticed what I thought was a clump of cat hair under my rarely used rocking chair. I only saw it because of the slight shadow it cast in the glow of the TV. Normally, Gadget doesn't leave such large deposits, so I gave him some nervous scritches. You feeling okay, buddy? I said, as I went to put my dishes in the sink and retrieve a dustpan. The pile was in the crook where the rocker meets the floor, so I moved the chair and attempted to sweep it up. The hairs, only perceptible because of their shadows, did not move. I jabbed at them with the broom, like I was scrubbing a stain, but the pile sat there. I concluded that I was obviously too tired, so I retreated to bed. The next morning, the hairs had proliferated into almost every corner of my house. Gadget was calling for his breakfast, and it surprised me I had any cat left. Now, I'm not the most fastidious person in the world, but I couldn't handle the mess. After feeding Gadget, I set out to bust the dust bunnies. I could see them clearly in the daylight, but try as I might, every pile was completely intangible. I took some deep breaths and began to grapple with the idea I was developing some sort of complex. This continued on for weeks. The piles kept getting larger, and I kept it to myself. I wasn't about to face the stigma at work or from my family for admitting I was seeing things. It was when the piles started appearing in the corners of ceilings, they started to resemble cobwebs. From there, they began to send out lead lines to each other. Long, silver threads that would span the room. I could walk right through them, and eventually, it became almost normal. Different nods would appear or disappear when I wasn't looking, and I just stared at them. Furious that they were invading my space. Furious at myself for seeing them at all. One night, I was trying to watch TV, when this particularly annoying strand kept floating into my field of vision. It was about two feet long and wasn't attached to anything on either side. I gave it a passive swat, and to my surprise, it moved. Wide-eyed, I grabbed it with both hands and started to inspect it. It felt like an impossibly thin wire. I wrapped it around a finger, but dared not but pull too tight, as I feared the thread was so strong and fine that it would slice through my skin. I was holding it as taut as I could, without hurting myself, when it evaporated. After that, I could move the threads, and I even attempted to keep my place tidy. This proved futile, as within hours, they would reappear. My newfound power, or symptom, gave me little solace. It didn't serve any practical purpose if I could touch the threads, but nothing else could see or feel them. 
and I went about my business for a couple of weeks with the perpetual sensation of walking through a spider's web. My co-workers thought it strange that I would part an invisible curtain before going into my cubicle. So far, it had only gotten worse. I was bound to hit bottom eventually, right? That night came when I woke up to get a glass of water. I was reaching through the obligatory mess of threads for the Brita. But this time the threads didn't yield or fade away. This time... They clung to my hand. I panicked and started clawing at the strands with my free hand, but to no avail. Not only did the threads hold fast to my skin and clothes, they were as strong as steel. I spun from the fridge, only to find the semi-tangible wall I had just passed through now shared the same property. The momentum of my dash bound my mostly good hand to my chest. I struggled forward. I made for the front door. I had to get out. My house was essentially a cavern draped in these dense nets. My limbs became less operable with each step as I accumulated curtain after curtain of webs. I made it to the door and managed to manipulate my fingers enough to unlock the door and open it. I put my full weight on the door as it swung open. The door passed through the webs as if they weren't there, but it launched me into a sea of the stuff. I rolled down my front stoop and landed face down in the grass. I couldn't move at all. It was like being encased in concrete. I laid there the rest of the night. When people started going to work, someone noticed me and called paramedics. How naive it was to be irritated, I couldn't close my eyes. A white gauze-like vial obscured my vision. The web strands petrified absolutely everything they were clinging to. I could move my eyeballs, but with only right is yes, left is no to work with. It was impossible to describe what was happening to me. Thankfully, they administrated artificial tears every so often. The nasogastric tube and catheter were also uncomfortable. Days went by. My family came to town to visit, and I communicated with them as best I could. The doctor told them I was catatonic, as there was no physical explanation for my riggedness. I hummed and repeatedly cast my eyes left, but my parents just looked at me with pity. They believed it was all in my head. I had a lot of time to think about what happened. The doctors proposed, admittedly, the most reasonable explanation. <laughs> I nearly started believing it myself, but then the mass started forming. I had agreed to getting a TV on one of those adjustable plastic arms tilted so I could see it. Limited though my vision was. Just above the top center of the TV on the ceiling was an area that seemed to suck in the fluorescent light of the room. Like a distant star, I could see it better when I wasn't looking directly at it. As time went on, it began to take shape. In the end, it was about three feet wide from one scythe-like leg to another. It resembled a six-legged deep purple spider, only it had no visible mouth and what seemed like one gleaming red eye in the center of its thorax. Its gleaming body was impossibly smooth and seamlessly contiguous. I couldn't look away. I couldn't shut my eyes. The more I stared, the more it came into focus. It took so long for it to form. For days, visitors and medical staff would come by and shake their heads at the poor, insane patient, signaling no, 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 no. I think it was here longer than it needed to be. I couldn't help but detect the slightest sadistic pleasure in its otherwise emotionless eye. One night, it dropped from the ceiling, unnaturally fast and landed without so much as disturbing my sheets. I could feel it though. 
I could feel its legs distribute its considerable weight as it prowled down my body. It moved from my chest down to my stomach and out of my line of sight. Nothing happened for several agonizing seconds. White hot pain shot through my body as something pierced my abdomen. I felt a violating pressure and I blessedly passed out. When I came to, I could move. The webs it entombed me in and the ambient ones around the room were gone. I was as elated as the doctors were confused. I wasn't even out the door before I was brought to my knees by a gut wrench writhing in my stomach. I demanded a CT scan, but of course, nothing showed. The frustrated doctors sent me home to the care of my family. I know, what's more likely? I was experiencing hallucinations leading to a psychotic break, which resulted in a catatonic state. And now, I've developed a somatoform disorder. Or, I'm about to become the unwitting father slash first meal to some ephemeral xenomorph babies. <laughs> but, that doesn't matter now. Real or not, the way this pain is going, I won't be around much longer. <sighs> Hopefully you, at least, can learn from what happened to me. If I hadn't entertained the webs in those early days, I don't think it could get this far. If you catch a glimpse of something shining in your peripheral vision, just ignore it. Don't spend extended periods of time looking at one spot, like at a screen. If you walk through a spider's web, just pretend like it didn't happen. It needed me to see it. Don't pay attention. <laughs>